Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations. At your service here to describe another type of HF or high frequency antenna, this one particularly designed for reception. It resembles a long wire antenna and it should be straight and it should be at least several wavelengths long coming out from your station. You hook it up just as if it were a long wire but instead of way up high you only need to get it a small fraction of a wavelength above the earth. Here's the earth down here as if you can't tell by my labeling it. one fraction of a wavelength where n is some integer fairly large five six seven so it might be a sixth the seventh an eighth the wavelength high only a few feet above the ground maybe even so low that somebody could hang themselves on it heaven forbid if that were their predilection but you don't want to be responsible for anything like that in, in any day and age but the basic premise is that it has to be several wavelengths long, it should be straight, it should be low to the ground, and preferably over relatively level earth. So if you live on one of those farms out in Dakota Territory right now, that's probably covered in snow and bitter cold temperatures, well below zero Celsius, perfect nights for receiving on a beverage antenna on bands such as 80 or even 160 meters but they'll they'll work on 20 40 60 meters 30 meters any of those bands an antenna like this is bi-directional because it's non-terminated signals coming from either right along the wire in this direction or right along the wire in this direction at a low angle to the horizon are received best so it is a directional antenna the directional the favored directions are more or less in the direction the wire runs and contrary to the direction that the wire runs it's bi-directional it has a feed point impedance of approximately 600 ohms. I think I'm going to make this black so I can write in black from now on. 600 ohm purely resistive feed point impedance. Well, it it isn't necessarily purely resistive, but you can use a transmatch and tune this thing and match it to your radio. A good transmatch that'll match an unbalanced line of course the ground should be right at your shack and then uh, you can receive signals quite well from either this direction running along the wire or this direction running along the wire if you are so predisposed you can extend this wire through a 600 ohm non-inductive resistor to a ground and this resistor should be capable of handling at least half of your transmitter power but I'd say all of your transmitter output power so it'll dissipate power when you transmit. When you, If you connect an antenna, a beverage antenna, up with a resistor like that then it will only receive well in directions coming from the far side of your station rather than bi-directional. It gets rid of the other direction because signals traveling along the wire in this direction will be dissipated to ground through the resistor. And that's exactly what they do and they sometimes call this a traveling wave antenna for that very reason because the wave kind of travels along the antenna. The wave fronts as they arrive 
preferably vertically polarized, move faster along the wire than they do along the earth. It's sort of like a transmission line, but as you get closer and closer and closer to the station, the signal moving along the wire gets more and more out of phase with the signal moving along the earth. So the top side of the transmission line, which is the wire, and the lower side, which would theoretically be the reflected image of the wire under the ground, they it, it carries the wave along in, in such a manner that it becomes more and more out of phase in the top wire with respect to the bottom imaginary wire so that when it gets to your station rather than canceling itself out you get a signal but only if it's coming from this direction if you have a resistor uh, to, to dissipate the power on that end of the antenna if you don't then either direction right along the wire so it's a highly directional antenna. It tends to be a rather low noise antenna because it is so close to the earth and because it is so directional. Of course, if there are people determined to make HF noise for you, they're certainly going to have no trouble succeeding in this pathetic, noisy time. However, there are st some people who still have the real estate to set up antennas like this and on cold winter nights like this when there are thunderstorms in most of the country only a distant thought maybe in certain parts of the Florida Keys and South Florida might have some Central America might have some but they're mainly far away you want to receive signals say from Europe on 160 meters you point this antenna generally towards the northeast in most of the United States. If you have a dissipating resistor here, you'll hear signals from Europe uh, much better than you'll hear them from any other direction. As for transmitting, well, in case you inadvertently press the key, that's what your resistor is for so you don't burn it out. But it's not a transmitting antenna. This is mainly an, anten an antenna intended only for receiving. It's just not that efficient for transmitting. It will work, but if you're going to transmit, you need a wire that's higher up above the ground than a small fraction of a wavelength. So in effect, what you get is a, a, a length of transmission line. Well, I'm I'm really trying here with this software but not having such good results you get an image wire under the earth it forms a parallel wire line signals come along this parallel wire line and were it not for the lossiness of the earth these wave fronts would remain vertical all the way and you'd hear nothing but because the earth has some loss and has a lower velocity factor than the wire in the receiving antenna itself, you tend to get this slanting of the wave fronts as they move closer and closer towards you. That's why it needs to be several wavelengths long so that this slant can achieve a sufficient angle so as to allow for a, su a significant phase difference between the antenna and its image when it gets to your transmatch, to your radio, and ultimately to your ears as you hear W1GV sending CQ. Well, not from Dakota Territory. I'd have to be on vacation somewhere like in Denmark, maybe. Then you'd hear me in Dakota Territory or vice versa. So that is your beverage antenna. You can read a lot more about this type of antenna in the ARRL handbook or the ARRL antenna book. Uh, they describe in much greater detail how this type of antenna works and the various options for setting them up. But if you have the real estate and you have those cold winter nights 
and you've got nothing better to do than ham radio, which is often the case on cold, lonely winter nights in Dakota Territory, you might want to give a listen with a beverage antenna and see what pops into your radio. This is the time, this is the season for 160 and 80 meters. It doesn't come but once a year, along with bitter cold and all the wonderful inconveniences and opportunities that that offers, like cars that won't start, transmissions that won't shift, pipes that freeze, and ham radios that are more active than in any other time of the year. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV, signing off saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which, on the 160 meter CW band, or any other CW band for that matter, would translate into my native language, da 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 da.